Hey everybody, Dr. Darren Ingalls here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about using supplements to try and help rebuild the myelin, which is that sheath that surrounds your nervous system, and that's what breaks down in multiple sclerosis. So it's an autoimmune process where the immune system attacks that sheath, breaks it down to the point where the nerves don't conduct the way they're supposed to, and that's why we see a lot of the symptoms of MS, which include, you know, balance problems, coordination issues, numbness, and so forth. So when you look at a lot of the research on rebuilding myelin, Unfortunately, almost all that research is done in mice or other animals, so it doesn't necessarily translate to what happens in humans, but you know, there's no harm in a lot of these nutrients because they have other potential benefits. So I just want to share a little bit about my own personal supplement regimen. This is what I take every day to try and help rebuild my myelin. And again, this is based mostly on animal research, but uh, I'll share it with you anyway. So the first thing I take is just a regular multivitamin. This is my particular brand. And a lot of the good multivitamins nowadays are very high in B vitamins. So again, we have some evidence that B vitamins, particularly folic acid and B12 are very nutritive to the nervous system, both the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So this multivitamin particular has uh, methylated versions of these B vitamins in it, which are the active form of the nutrient. So I take a couple capsules of this twice a day with food. Multivitamins as a whole, you do want to take with food because a lot of the nutrients in it need food for absorption. So that's the importance of taking it. Plus, if you take a multivitamin on an empty stomach, certain nutrients like zinc on an empty stomach can make you feel a little bit nauseous. So that's the reason for the multi. Uh, the next thing I take is coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 is specifically to help rebuild the mitochondria. We have some evidence that people with MS uh, have poor functioning or damaged mitochondria. And mitochondria are the part of the cell that are literally the powerhouses of the cell. So this is what creates energy. A lot of people with MS have very poor energy, poor stamina, and a lot of that's due to mitochondrial function. So CoQ10 is good for building your mitochondria. And CoQ10 has the additional benefits of helping prevent heart disease. So the next one is vitamin D. I take a combination of vitamin D and vitamin K2. There's some evidence that the two work synergistically, but vitamin D has been shown to be low in a lot of people with MS and other uh, neurological conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You know, the higher latitude you get, the further you get away from the sun. In the winter time, even here in sunny California, most of us are indoors more. We wear long clothing when we're outside or we wear sunblock. All of that effectively can, uh, blocks the conversion of vitamin D, which mostly happens in the skin. We actually get very little vitamin D through food, so we depend on the sun for that exposure. And as your vitamin D levels drop, your risk for autoimmune disease and neurological problems goes up. So again, taking a good source of vitamin D. And if you're concerned about toxicity, it's very easy to get a simple blood test that would measure your vitamin D levels. Ideally, we wanna see your vi vitamin D uh, level over 50. That's vitamin D3. So when you get a blood test, you can ask your doctor to check it. And again, it's a very easy way to monitor how you're doing. Vitamin D toxicity, I have actually never seen in clinical practice. Uh, consider if you go to the beach on a summer day, your body can make upwards of 100,000 IUs of vitamin D. And when you're taking a vitamin D supplement that's 5,000 to 10,000 IUs a day, that's obviously not likely to happen. But again, to err on the side of caution, just have your blood levels checked fairly regularly and make sure you're getting adequate amount. <laughs> Next thing I take is magnesium. I take magnesium citrate. Uh, magnesium in just about any form is a natural spasmolytic. A lot of people with MS tend to get muscle spasms. Cramping can happen anytime during the day at night, but that limits mobility, that causes pain. So, you know, if you're taking medication to help reduce muscle spasms, that can also be helpful. But magnesium's a, a nutrient that anybody can take, and it's very safe for anybody, and it does a nice job of helping reduce those muscle spasms. You know, magnesium's one one of those nutrients that you use probably more than any other nutrient in the body so you can burn through it very quickly and if you happen to be someone who's fairly active you'll burn through it faster so magnesium is one of those foods where, or one of those nutrients that we don't always get a lot through food magnesium tends to be very high in legumes nuts and seeds if you've been following the walls protocol and you've removed legumes from your diet you've removed that magnesium source so this is a really great way just to supplement with it to make sure you're getting adequate amounts measuring magnesium in the blood I don't find terribly helpful unless you're really severely deficient it's not going to be a good marker about whether you're getting enough the good news with magnesium if you get too much it will cause loose stool or diarrhea you'll know if you're getting too much so I like to have people take magnesium up to a point where they really saturate the tissue but not so much that you get loose stool or diarrhea so if you start taking taking magnesium and you start to get a little loose stool just back off the dose a little bit and that should be okay for you 
Uh, the next thing I take, uh, this is actually, I was introduced by Dr. Walls. This is emu oil, and it's from a company called Walkabout. Um, I was introduced to it at her conference last year. And omega-3 fatty acids are very important for people living with MS because it's anti-inflammatory, plus it's important for uh, building the nutrition of the nerve cells themselves. So you can get it through fish oil, you can get it through flax oil. Uh, I was introduced to emu oil, which, uh, I don't know, I've taken fish oil and, and other essential fatty acids over the years, and I started taking this and I noticed a difference where between other companies, other oils, I didn't really notice much of a change, but the emu oil, I definitely noticed a change. So now for my MS patients, I'm recommending the emu oil. And again, I find it's very well tolerated. Uh, I don't burp it up like you do with some fish oils. Make sure you take this with food, any kind of essential fatty added, you want a little bit of food in your stomach just to help with absorption, also to keep you from burping it up. The next thing I take is phosphatidylcholine. So phosphatidylcholine is a type of fat. And phosphatidylcholine is a, a fat that's particularly integrated into your brain and to your nerve tissue. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the brain being this big glob of fat, and it's true, but that big glob of fat is mostly made up of phosphatidylcholine. It is that lipid layer that makes up the brain, your nervous tissue, and a lot of other tissues in your body. It's also very important for liver and detoxification. So I feel like with phosphatidylcholine, you're getting the brain benefits, you're getting the liver benefits, and again, it's generally very well tolerated. The one thing I'll say about phosphatidylcholine, uh, they're horse pills. Uh, these are 1,000 milligram capsules. So for people that have a hard time swallowing capsules, this might be a little bit hard. There is a liquid form of this as well. So if you find swallowing the big capsules is challenging for you, you can always get it in liquid form. The liquid form, I will tell you, is really thick. It's not like drinking water. It's more like drinking really thick honey. So there is a little bit of a texture issue and a taste issue, but again, it is a way to get it in. So if you have trouble with the capsules, the liquid is also an option. So again, that's phosphatidylcholine. And the last thing that's part of my regimen is glutathione. I particularly like this company called ReadySorb. This was developed by Dr. Tim Guilford in Palo Alto, California. And he actually invested a lot of his own money into this product. And he found the absorption of this liposomal glutathione was almost as good as getting it IV or intravenously. So that says a lot because a lot of the glutathione products really don't get absorbed very well. And glutathione, again, is very nutritive to the nervous system. It's a very important antioxidant and important for liver detoxification. And so again, you're getting a lot of different mechanisms with glutathione. There are other companies out there, other products. If you don't like the liquid, uh, glutathione is a sulfur-based compound, so it does have a little bit of an eggy flavor to it. Some people don't like the taste. You can mix in a little bit of dilute juice to mask the flavor. If you really have a hard time with the liquid or if you travel a lot and taking liquids isn't possible, then there is one called S-acetyl glutathione, which is an encapsulated form, and I think it works pretty well as well. But again, I like the liquid if people can take it and tolerate it uh, because again I think the absorption is a little bit better and clinically I see good results with it. So you know that's my supplement regimen and again I think you know all of these nutrients have a potential impact on rebuilding myelin. So if you or someone you know has been living with MS and we're looking for every advantage we have to try and help rebuild our myelin uh, again I think this is a pretty good regimen to follow. There are other nutrients out there that may be beneficial as well. There's more research coming out every day so as more information comes along. I'll pass that along to you guys. But I hope you found this helpful and uh, thanks for joining me today.